Okay, we are now joined by three of the top drivers in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. We have Justin Allgaier, driver of the number seven, Brant celebrating the Farmer Chevrolet. We have Cole Custer, driver of the number double zero, Haas Automation Ford. And we have Elliot Sadler, driver of the number one, one main financial Chevrolet. We're going to open the floor up for questions. We'll start here with Jerry and work our way around. Jerry Jordan, KingdomTires.net, Performance Racing Network. Real quick, as hot as it is out here today, it's one thing to say I'm going to stay hydrated all day, I'm going to stay in the air conditioner, but when you're in the car, it heats up pretty quick, and that water, you know, you, everything you've hydrated goes away. How do you manage, especially at night like this, when, uh, when we're here to, to survive through the end of this race? I think Ellie and I were just, we were just talking about that. I mean, I, you know, for us, actually coming in here and getting in the nice, cool air conditioning and, and you know, whether you got a motorhome here or you go in the trailer, I think uh, staying out of the air is probably the best thing we can do. You know, acclimation to the heat is always a big deal for us. Um, you know, I used to drive around with my with my heater on and my windows up in, in my passenger car during the summer because it was like that's the only thing you could do. I think Bobby Allison or Donnie Allison, one of them, Harry Gant used to do that. I always heard the stories, and so I tried it, and it actually works. But um, I think you just got to do your best. You know, I think that's the hardest part. Like a couple weeks ago in Iowa – it was extremely hot. I know that, that some drivers were fine when the race was over and, and others were, were struggling with it. I think it's just a matter of um, conditioning yourself to it and, and making sure that you, you do the best job you can. Yeah, I've just I've always kind of trained in the heat. Um, I'm a little bit different than other guys. Um, I have a gym in my house, and I train with the heat on, and I train in sweatpants and sweatshirts and stocking cap and things like that to try to get me used to being in, in that environment. And I try to prepare. You know, when you know it's going to be a hot weekend, I try to start hydrating a day or two earlier, you know, Wednesday or Thursday to make sure I'm uh, good on fluids because I know we're going to lose some during practice. So I just try to prepare myself as best I can and kind of go from there. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I would say is hydration. But, I mean, uh, I might take up Justin's advice. <laughs> I might, might start turning the heater around, I guess. Can you video that? I, I might have to. I might. You've been running a lot, though, in the heat. Like, you guys have been uh, training. You've been running some. A little heat. bit. A little bit, yeah. Me and McReynolds try to. <laughs> Chris? Chris Knight, CatchFence.com. Elliot, uh, we've seen 2019 plans starting to get announced. I was just wondering what your status is with One Main and JRM, and do you expect to return next season? Um, yeah, the, uh, you know, One Main just got actually just bought out again by Apollo. And, um, you know, anytime I think a large – acquisition like that happens um you know there's a lot of moving parts a lot of things going on we saw this a couple years ago with with one main when they got bought out a couple years ago as well i keep telling the reason they keep getting bought and doing so good because we're doing so good on the racetrack uh but you know one main uh has decided they're not coming back uh to nascar next year in the capacity uh that they're at now um they're, they're still looking at uh maybe doing a little bit lesser of a schedule than what they are now and we're going through all of that I know uh, JRM is a great race team. I love being there. You know, I have a great relationship with my teammates. Uh, you know, but sponsorship is a big part of, um, you know, your future in this sport. So we're going to try to uh, cross all our T's and dot all our I's. And uh, we, we know we have some sponsorship to find, and we'll try to go do that. And uh, we run good enough to, to make that happen. And I know uh, JRM plans on being four strong teams next year, and, and they deserve to be. They have a lot of employees there. And, um, championship um, contending cars um, so you know we'll, we'll cross that bridge we we'll get there Chris but right now we we kind of know where one main stands and uh, you know I've been with those guys over a decade I absolutely love that company and the people that are involved in it uh, they've been huge to me and my family and they've been huge in the sports the longest running primary sponsor in the Xfinity series and uh, you know I've got a, a lot of great friends over there I understand the uh, situation they're in and and uh, support their decision 100 percent and uh, we're going to try to uh, finish the rest of the season as strong as we can as as partners and and get those guys some wins and, and get those guys a championship they they deserve it as a sponsor in this series additional questions from the floor i have a question for each of the gentlemen I know we're in the heat of summer now, but how much are the you know getting ready for the playoffs and getting situated for the playoffs? How much is that weighing in each of your minds at this point in time of the season? Uh, last uh, a couple weeks ago was great for us, um, obviously locking ourselves into the playoffs. But at the same time, um, you know, just getting in isn't good enough. I think that's the most important part for for all of us. And um, 
you know, I know that I got two good competitors right here at the at the table with me today. I know that there's some other guys that um, obviously this year have have stepped up to the plate. Um, you know, we've had a great great team this year at Junior Motorsports, and I know that uh, I, you know it, it's weird because you get to these final races and and you can prep and plan and do all the things you want to do, and and you can have a, a spectacular season all the way up to that point. But uh, it just seems like you know when you get to the playoffs, it it everybody elevates. Um, you know, obviously, we we know that that the playoffs are going to be challenging. You, you you're at everybody else's mercy. Um, you know that there's only uh, uh, you know there, there, there's only so much luck to go around, unfortunately. Um, and and we saw guys last year. I mean, Cole uh, went in at Homestead. Um, you know, certain guys that that stepped up throughout the playoffs and had certain races where they really excelled. I think y you definitely have to be thinking about it. Uh, no matter where you're at in points, no matter what you do, I think you have to be thinking about it. Um, but I think we were thinking about it when we went to Daytona in February. And and we're not gonna we're not gonna change all the way through. Cole. Yeah, I mean, basically, I think right now everybody's you know we're we're gonna hit a really long stretch here with 15 races. I think it is, but I think everybody's just focused on trying to get playoff points and everything they can right now and wins. I mean, really, right now, I mean, everybody who's up there in the top 10 in points probably thinks they're gonna make the playoffs. So I think uh, really everybody's just trying to not really focus on points and trying to get the playoff points. Ellie, you? Yeah, we've all uh, Kevin and I have always had a plan we feel like we have a plan on what we want to do the first part of the season the middle part of the season and then as things ramp up for the playoffs where we um, as far as getting cars ready our favorite cars ready lined up and things like that um, we, we feel like we're where we want to be as, as far as that's concerned uh, we're, we're at the top of the points what kind of frees us up to be aggressive to try to get more stage points and things like that throughout races and covers up any bad luck or bad decisions we might make uh, you know, through those races. But I feel like we're, we're where we want to be. The biggest thing I see different this year than last year is I feel like somebody's going to get left out at Homestead. I feel like last year I could pick out the last four, maybe five teams that were going to make it. I think this year you're going to see some top-notch race teams that are very fast with big-name drivers in the Xfinity Series not make it to Homestead because I feel like it's more competitive this year. It's more guys that have speed uh, capabilities, and and uh, I think it's going to be more guys in play when it comes down to Phoenix or or you know Kansas or something like that to try to make it to Homestead. Lee, Justin, after winning here last year, how big was that for Brant? I mean, you know, obviously it's a it's a home game for you and a home game for Brant. So how was that? And I've got a follow up. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, winning here last year was incredible. You know, to, to do it the way that we did it, um, kind of that late late race restart. Uh, I'm not going to call it getting lucky, but but everything had to work out exactly the way that it did for us to, to be in that position. Um, you know, that was huge, that, not only for me, but but uh, like you said, for, for Brandt. I mean, to, to have uh, – last year we had 4-H and FFA on the car and, and just a, a, a cool program that we had last year. And to go to Victory Lane, we had a ton of, ton of guests um, at the track. Kind of similar to what we have this year, you know, we, we changed it up a little bit this year, celebrating the farmer. Obviously, that's a, an important initiative for us and, and especially um, for, for Brant on the agriculture side of things. But I think they've got 300 and over 350 people here this weekend, and I know that this is a this is a big event for them. I mean, to be their home race, to be my home race. Um, you know, this this racetrack is is always lended itself to exciting finishes and, and, and crazy races and. Um, I've been lucky enough to, to be on the, the winning side of, t of that twice. Both were crazy at the end, um, and I, I don't think that Saturday is going to be any different. I just hope that uh, hope that we can we can pull it off again and win another one. Yeah, before you end this uh, uh, press conference, it's kind of funny sitting here. I feel kind of small with Jesse sitting over there. Uh, uh, the hero uh, acts that he did Sunday and, of course, being a serviceman for our country and part of Naval Academy, man, you're, you're like our hero, man. So thank you for being a brave man. It was cool to see that story, and I think we should leave so he should come up here and tell his story, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, Can I get one more? You get one more. Sorry, Lee. I'm, I just no, saw it's, him it's, it, I, I get it. I'm a little ADD, too. Um, Cole, your, your cup experience this year, um, what have you learned – as far as the talent level of trying to compete against those guys, I mean, Elliot can you know could speak for hours on that, but um, you know what what have you learned and, and how much cup activity do you have left this season? Uh, I don't think everybody says enough how good those guys are. Really, I think uh, those guys are some literally the best in the in the whole world. So I think uh, 
you know, for the experience level that they have in those cars and, you know, what, you know, the class of drivers that they are, it makes it extremely difficult. So I think uh, everything from an Xfinity car, I mean, everything's, it's a little bit close, but everything's a little bit different also. So it kind of adds up to a lot. So uh, it's just trying to learn every single time you're out there. And uh, right now we'll, you know, we're trying to do a little bit more, but we'll see. It's good luck this weekend.